All right, let's look at forms in a bit more detail. So after this presentation, you'll be able to differentiate between quite a lot of the many different types of form input. These are different elements we're going to look at, and also a lot of the attributes which work together with the elements. So where are we at the moment? Well, we know that this is a typical form. We have an action, we have a method, we have some kind of input, such as a text area, and we have another important element, which is the submit button. That's a typical kind of form right there. What else can we do? Well, we can do all these extra things. So this slide shows uh, text input type, checkbox input type, and radio input type. This uh, checkbox and radio have a group of different inputs which all work together, so they all need the same name. That's the name which gets received by the server. Okay? Same thing over here, radio, they need the same name. What does it look like? Okay, checkbox radio, this is our checkbox area, this is our radio area. And to explore this, I'm going to have to jump off to a particular web page in a, the browser. So let's come over here. Looks like this. And this is our checkbox. Behaves like this. You can have any kind of combination of choices that you like. None, all, whatever you want. And then down here, we have the opposite idea. The opposite idea, you're just choosing one item instead of choosing any number of items. And up here is just our simple little text, which is just for one small piece of text instead of a large area. Okay, nothing too surprising. And uh, let's just carry on. Okay, so that was our straightforward, simple inputs there. What else could we do? Well, there's a password type of input. And that's quite useful. Often you have to log in, right? Log into Facebook or something. You have to type your password. It's a piece of text. You don't want it to be shown in the form. So there's a nice password input control. What does it look like? It looks like this. It's just a piece of text. Nothing too surprising, but it hides your text. Let's play with it. And type in some kind of secret password, whatever you want. La la la, la 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 la. Great. It doesn't show it. Everything's fine. No problem at all. However, there is a little problem if you're not careful. So let's go to the next slide. And let's think how you might do this. There's your password input. Submit button. There's all the details. Everything looks fine. No problem at all. However, there is a big problem. The big problem is if you actually run it. So perhaps I'll just run it right now. If you run it, then you're going to get a big problem if you use the get method. So let's do this, something like this. Type in something, some kind of whatever it is. Do, 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 and let's send it to the server. Looks scary, but remember, this is just my test server program, which dumps out everything it knows about and then sends it back to the browser. All right, so I passed in a secret password. But look, right up here, because it uses the get method, I've got my secret password right there. My secret password is secret with lots of T's. That's what I typed in. I typed it in, it gets sent. But by default, the browser uses the get method. The get method will show everything you type in. Total disaster, not secret at all. Okay? It works. I mean, it sends it to the server, but, you know, people could read this very easily. Not a good solution at all. So, got to be very careful if you use that password input. Okay, some of the other things you might like to do with a form. You might like to select from a list, a particular list, and uh, the option and select combination is one way to do that. So, this is a drop-down menu, and it will show all of those things that are set up in the form. So if I click on here, it looks a bit small because I have a kind of zoomed in web page, but actually it's correctly showing those different things I asked it to list. It's not showing it very large, but it is showing it. Okay, so I can choose one of those things, press the submit button, which I haven't shown here, and it sends the selection over to the server. Okay, plenty of other things you can do with forms as well. 
Uh, so for example, you can basically add some kind of preferences, whatever you want. So if you want to show something in a text box, right at the start, before anybody types anything, you can do that by using a value attribute, all right? If you want to show some text right at the start, before anybody types anything, but you want the text to disappear when they start typing, then you use placeholder. You can use autofocus, which means the browser jumps to that field and highlights it and encourages the user to do that field first, okay? So I suppose it's a more important field. Also, you can say user must do these fields and cannot submit the form unless they do these fields. These are all attributes you can add to almost any of those form inputs that we've seen. So here's an example of the things we've looked at so far. I've just loaded this example. We have three fields, first name, last name, age, and a submit button. Now we're showing several attributes here. The first one is autofocus, and we've used autofocus to tell the browser to highlight a particular field, which happens to be the first field, as soon as the example is loaded. So you can see that by this kind of blue border around the first field. Second thing is the use of value, and I used value so that DAVE is automatically shown in this field. I didn't type it, I haven't typed anything yet, but by using value, it automatically shows it when I load it. I could click in the field and I could change it, edit it and do whatever I want, but at least it shows me some starting text. Okay, in our next field, we have placeholder. So this is placeholder and you can see a big long message here. Your last name goes here. So I could start typing something like whatever I want and as soon as I start typing, the text disappears. So that's the difference with value. By using placeholder, I could do a message, it completely disappears when I start typing. Right down here, we have a example of required. So this is our third field and it is required, which means if I don't type anything and I press submit, up comes a message. It hasn't sent anything to the server, Message comes up, please fill in this field because this is a required field. So I'd have to fill something in, just type something, and then I'd be allowed to submit. All right, a couple more things. These are labels, so because they are set up properly, if I click on the label, it will highlight the field which it is for. So the first label is for the first field. The second label is for the second field. When I clicked on the label, it highlighted the relevant field. The third label, not surprisingly, that is for the third field. So it's just a nice little feature. You click and it highlights where you have to enter data. Okay, that's using label and for. All right, let's continue. So here's the code of the example we were just looking at. Here is our first label and first input and second label, second input, third label, third input. Now in our first label and input, we were illustrating autofocus. That shows a blue box, although it may be a slightly different box depending on the browser, around this particular field. I was also illustrating value, and that tells the browser to put some kind of text into that box straight away when the code is loaded. In our second example, we were illustrating placeholder. There's the text which was automatically shown and that text disappears as soon as you start typing. And in the third example, we were illustrating required. And so if you remember, we could not submit anything to the server until this particular input field was filled in. It doesn't have to be one input field, by the way. It could be all input fields if that's what you want. So those are the main things we were looking at, and also label together with for. So label just means some text, so we have our text, and that text is mapped to a particular input field. Which one? Well, it's mapped to first name. So that is what we see down here. The ID of this particular input field is first name. 
So that matches what the label is for. So those two are a pair right there. Now, got to be a little bit careful. I've also used name over here and I've used actually the same text inside it, first name. So what's name for? So name is useful on the server. When this set of data is sent to the server, it goes to a program, the program will say, okay, first name equals Dave, if you type Dave or David or whatever you type, it will be mapped to first name. And that comes from the name. So that's a bit different to the ID. So the ID is useful for programming, but also in this case, useful for saying which attribute, I'm sorry, which field the label is for. Okay, so we have the same pattern down here. The label is for a particular ID. And same thing here, the label is for a particular ID. And I just chose to use the same text for the name field because that makes it a bit easier for server-side programming, but that's not a requirement. Okay, so we've had a good look here at our introduction to forms, and that's where we'll finish our more on forms presentation.